one way slabs are structural elements that primary sports loads in one direction they are commonly used in building and consists of single layer of reinforced concrete spanning between supports such as beams or walls the reinforcement is typically placed in the direction where the slab is designed to resist bending movements providing strength and stability hello and welcome back to the master civil engineering and in this video we will learn that how to design a one way slab for flexural shrinkage and temperature reinforcement i have been given a question which says that we have a slab thickness of 160 mm and factor design moment of 35 kN meter assume the material strength for grade of concrete is 25 megapascal and yield strength of steel is 420 megapascal we have to design a one way slab for flexural shrinkage and temperature reinforcement okay so first thing in designing the slab is that we will find the effective flexural depth of this slab okay so aci metric code this requires a minimum clear cover of 20 mm for slabs using grade 420 reinforcement of sizes number 36 and smaller assume that we will use a bar size of number 16 which has a 16 mm nominal diameter okay so effective depth this will be given as uh total depth of slab minus clear cover minus half of the diameter of the bar so total depth of slab is 160 mm clear cover is 20 mm and the diameter of bar is 16 mm so it will be 160 minus 20 minus 16 by 2 which is 132 mm after finding the effective depth next step is that we will find the area of the flexural reinforcement okay so slabs these are usually lightly reinforced elements so we can assume that uh, this is a tension controlled section and we will use the value of phi is equal to 0.9 and we will also assume that flexural moment arm jd this is equal to 0.95d so required area of tension reinforcement this should be greater or equal to mu divided by phi fy into d minus a by 2 since we are assuming that flexural moment arm this is equal to jd is equal to 0.95d so for this d minus a by 2 we will be using jd so it will be equal to mu divided by phi into fy into jd putting values mu this is equal to 35 into 10 is power 6 newton mm value of phi is 0.9 okay for tension control section FY that is the yield strength of steel. This is 420 megapascal. JD is 0.95 into 132, where it is D is the effective depth. This gives me the value of required area of tension reinforcement equal to 738 mm square. After finding the required area of tension reinforcement, we will use one iteration to improve this value. Okay, so. slabs are usually designed for 1 meter weight so p is equal to 1 meter or 1000 mm first we will find the depth of this witney's stress block using the uh, value of area of required flexural reinforcement so a this will be equal to as into fy divided by 0.85 into fc dash into p as we just calculated equal to 738 mm square fy is 420 divided by 0.85 grade of concrete is 25 megapascal and value of p is 1000 mm this gives me the value of a equal to 14.6 mm after finding the value of a we can now find the depth of the neutral axis which is given by a divided by beta 1 where this beta 1 is 0.85 for concrete grade of 25 megapascal so the value of neutral axis will be 14.6 divided by 0.85 which is 17.2 mm we can see that this uh, value of neutral axis is uh, very small as compared to the flag uh, effective depth so this will be a tension control section so value of phi is equal to 0.9 as assumed in the step first after finding the value of uh, this a we can now recalculate the area of the tension reinforcement So now the area of tension reinforcement this will be mu divided by phi into fy d minus a by 2. So again the value of mu this is 35 into 10 is power 6 newton mm. Phi 0.9 fy into 
d this is 132 and the value of a uh, is 14.6 this gives me now the area of the required area of the tension reinforcement as 743 mm square okay so this is the final area of the tension reinforcement which we will be using in the slab okay before uh, selecting this as the area of the tension reinforcement we will see whether this satisfies the limit of the minimum reinforcement to control cracking due to temperature and shrinkage effects okay so for slabs using the grade of uh, steel uh, yield strength grade for 20 megapascal uh, area minimum area of steel this is equal to 0 0.0018 into b into h okay so this will be equal to 0 0.0018 into 1000 into 160 which is equal to 288 mm square which is less than the calculated area of the tension reinforcement so it satisfies the limit for the minimum reinforcement to control cracking due to temperature and the shrinkage okay after that since in the first step we assume that we will be using number 16 bar having the nominal diameter of 16 mm we can find the maximum permissible spacing between the bars to satisfy the nominal moment strength requirement spacing this should be less or equal to into, uh, area of bar into thousand divided by required steel area for 16 number bar area of bar is 199 so it will be 199 into thousand divided by 743 which is 268 mm this is the uh, maximum permissible spacing to satisfy the nominal movement strength before selecting the spacing we will check whether the maximum spacing limit to control uh, flexural crack width is satisfied okay so aci metric code gives the maximum spacing limit to control flexural crack width as s is equal to 380 into 280 divided by fs minus 2.5 uh, cc with an upper limit of 300 into 280 divided by fs where this fs is the uh, 2 by third of the yield strength so it will be 2 by third of 420 which is 280 megapascal and cc is the cover to bar which in this case is 20 mm after putting the values we get the uh, maximum we get the value of s equal 380 into 280 divided by 280 minus 2.5 into 20 which is 330 uh, with an upper limit of 300 into 280 divided by 280 so we can see here the upper limit of 300 governs uh, therefore but uh, the flexural strength requirement for spacing this should be less than 268 mm so overall this spacing governs that is the spacing required for flexural strength requirement okay not for the maximum uh, crack width so we will use the spacing here equal to 250 mm okay this also satisfies the maximum spacing uh, that is permitted by the aci code that the maximum spacing should be smaller than three times the depth of the slab or 450 mm so finally we will use the spacing for the main or flexural reinforcement at uh, 250 mm after finding the spacing for the main steel now we can find the spacing of the temperature and the shrinkage reinforcement we have already calculated the minimum uh, steel area required for temperature and shrinkage effects which is equal to 288 mm square suppose we will use number 13 bar uh, for the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement which has a nominal diameter of 13 mm the spacing required for this will be s should be less or equal to a b into thousand divided by a s minimum a b is the area of the 13 number bar which is 129 so it will be 129 into thousand divided by minimum required steel area which is 288 so this is equal to 450 mm okay this uh, should also not exceed the smaller of five times the depth of the slab and 450 mm so we will use the spacing for the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement to be 450 mm that is we will use 13 number bars at 450 mm to satisfy the requirement of the shrinkage and temperature effects okay finally the sketch of the slab you can see the main bars that is number 16 bars at 250 mm for flexural reinforcement and the temperature or 
shrinkage reinforcement we will be using number 13 bars at 450 mm okay so this video showed you how to design a one-way slab for flexural shrinkage and temperature reinforcement okay i hope you guys learned something new from this video and enjoy the video if you find my videos helpful please subscribe to my channel and share this video thanks for watching and stay tuned